introverted noise. Hurry up, Daddy. All right, welcome back to the Climb in the Pocket podcast. I am your host, Jason Brown. You can find me on Twitter at Brown Jason. We're keeping things moving right along here with our one-a-day draft series, getting you all the info that you need to know about really all the positions in the draft with our man, the busiest, the hardest working man on draft Twitter, QB1, JR. How you doing? How you been? I'm good, man. Can't complain at all. Ready to dive into some defensive tackles. All right. Well, let's get this thing going here. And as we've been doing so far, uh, JR is going to get you in here, give you a little bit of information about what he's looking at when he does scout these positions. And then he's going to give you a few players that he likes on each day of the draft. Not a lot of detail, just enough to get you, uh, let you know where you need to go, who you need to Google, or who you need to look up when you buy JR's draft guide. So uh, without further ado, defensive tackles, another position in the trenches for the layperson like myself can be kind of difficult to scout beyond just, you know, is that guy athletic? Is that guy not athletic? What are you looking at when you're looking at the film and you need to uh, to pick a defensive tackle for your team? Yeah, so just similar to offensive line, I think this is, an, this is another position where you have to understand scheme and you have to understand body types and the type of defensive tackle that they are. And there's different types of schemes. You have a three down front defensive scheme where you have a guy head up over the center. And then you have other guys, whether that's head up or inside shoulders of the tackles. And then you have a four down scheme where you have a guy in between the shoulders of the centers and the guard. And then you have what's called a three technique on the outside shoulder of the guard. So just understanding the schemes and the different types of defensive tackles that you're looking at. So you have what's called a two gap type of defensive tackle or you have a guy that's a one gap defensive tackle meaning that they're just holding down a single gap or in a three down scheme where they're holding down two gaps well now you need bigger body types that can hold down those two gaps because they're occupying a bigger area but with those one gap three techniques like the vikings have they're just occupying one area and you want guys that can get up the field right away so with that you want guys that are really athletic especially from their lower half and that's why a 10 yard split is so important with these three techniques because you get to see how good their ball get off is. And it shows that explosion when they're trying to penetrate through those a or B or even the C gap. So with that also, you want to see how good their strength is because as a run defender, they have to be able to hold up. And some of those guys have to take on those double teams. And if they're getting washed out of those gaps, it creates running lanes. So that's just a little peek behind the curtain of some of the things that I look for with these defensive tackles. Okay. All right. Well, there it is. Uh, day one. Who are your favorites? What do you like in? Who are the ones that, uh, if it was your team, you'd be running up there to uh, to get it in if it is a defensive tackle? Yeah, so, I mean, this guy is a top guy on, guy on my board. I think he's phenomenal, and that's Quentin Williams from Alabama. And his story is really unique, too, because last year he was a 270-pound defensive end that nobody really knew about, but he put, put the time in in the weight room. Uh, he gained a bunch of weight. I think he gained about 30 pounds. He's up to three right? He's hovering around 300 pounds right now, so – putting his time in the weight room, uh, also studying the scheme. And he was just the centerpiece of the Alabama defensive front this past year. And, I mean, if you're just watching a single game of his, it looks like a highlight tape. <laughs> that's how good his film is. Every single play, he has an effect, whether that's as a pass rusher or as a run defender. He was just completely unblockable. And it's every game throughout the year. And I haven't seen a defensive tackle this good in a really long time. And that's really a credit to him because I have scouted some really good guys in the past, but I haven't seen a defensive tackle this good in a long time. But the one year wonder thing you really do wonder about with him because he's only had one year of production, but he did sit, sit behind some really good players in the past. Deron Payne. Um, there's some other guys along the list too, that he really had to sit behind Jonathan Allen, both of those guys from the Redskins and Deshaun Hand is another name that he had to sit behind too. So he had some really good talented guys in front of him prior to that, but he finally got his chance to shine uh, this year, this past year started 15 games and he just shined and he won every single defensive award in the country. And you talk about a guy that has phenomenal strength. He's a terrific athlete. I think he ran a four, eight, three at 305 pounds, which is really good for a guy his size. That is absurd. And yeah, that's, that's really good. <laughs> I was shocked that he ran that fast. I thought I was expecting like the low four nines, 
but him hitting four eight is just phenomenal. And if I was at the top of the draft, I wouldn't have any problem with taking him. And I know positional value is really important, but we've seen how important interior pressure has become, and it's really starting to be more important than exterior pressure. And I know that's an ongoing debate in league circles right now, and even on Twitter, which one is more important between interior pocket pressure or exterior pocket pressure. But either way, he can provide supreme value in either area because he can play any position up front and even on third down and sub packages they experimented with him in various spots and he still was able to create pressure which is crazy and then you're getting into i won't say second tier guys but the lower guys below him rashawn gary i know that's a polarizing name and we'll see where he does end up going but you're really trusting the traits over the production with him. So I'm really interested to see where he does go. And we're, there's a team that's going to fall in love with his traits, and I'll be really surprised if he does fall out of the top 15. Uh, but going back, reiterating the top of my board, that's Ed Oliver. Uh, he's my third overall player right now. And I'm just really shocked to see the people that really were surprised with how well he did at his pro day. And, I mean, if you look at the film, you should have expected that. And – the jacket incident with him and former Houston head coach Major Applewhite seems like it was five years ago now. And once again, it's just funny seeing the draft come full circle with Ed Oliver. He should have never been out of anybody's top five. And it's not fair to compare him to Aaron Donald. Now, does he have some Aaron Donald-like qualities as far as explosiveness? Yes, but pinning that type of upside on him is a bit unfair. And he's a bit undersized, but as far as his explosiveness, if he's able to be paired with a dominant one technique or even an average guy, to his left or right side, if he's able to get those one-on-one -on -one matchups, he's going to be completely unblockable because we know the state of offensive line play throughout the league, and there's not going to be a guard that can match his explosiveness. Now, he does need to improve his hand usage a bit because he's gotten by to be able to out-athlete the opposition a lot of times, and he really doesn't have a plan a lot in his rushes. So that's something that he's going to have to improve upon. But as far as tier one guys, I think those probably are the top three. Now, I would add Jeffrey Simmons, but he does have a torn ACL. And that's a guy that the Vikings did have on the top 30 visit on Friday. So they've shown some interest in him. Everybody knows his story, the video that came out about him prior to Mississippi State. But he has had a clean resume since that point. And he's been a locker room leader. Everybody has said that about him. Now, Christian Wilkins is another guy that I absolutely love. Uh, from Clemson. You talk about a guy that is really high character, two-time team captain. He graduated from Clemson in two and a half years with his under undergraduate degree, got his master's degree too, substitute teacher in the off season for kindergarten and pre-K classes. So that shows the type of personality and the type of character that he does have. And another guy that's really starting to catch a lot of steam here lately is Jerry Tillery from Notre Dame. And I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he does end up being a first round pick a 6'6", 300 pounds, so he's that typical three technique that you could place in those B gaps to really cause a lot of disruption. Now, he has been a bit of a flash in the pan and inconsistent throughout the year, but you go back, you look at his Stanford game where he had four sacks and a forced fumble. That's really where his peaks lie. But other games throughout the year, he really did disappear a lot, but it came out even at the combine where he did play during the backstretch of the year with a torn labrum. So that may be, I don't want to say an excuse, but that may be why his production slipped a bit throughout the latter half of the year. But when he turns it on, he is really unstoppable. Well, uh, what I've taken from that is that you really, 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 really seem to like this uh, defensive tackle class because uh, you just gave me six of your quote unquote favorites on, uh, on just day one. Yeah, this is a defensive line period. This is a loaded class. If you don't find a stud in this class, you need to get rid of your entire scouting department. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in that case, well, let's start to get into the places where the uh, the scouting department should start making their money. Because it sounds like in the first round, if you make a pick, it's a defensive tackle. You're probably going to get a pretty good player. As we get into day two, maybe the scouting department needs to work, work a little bit harder. Who are the guys you like there? Yeah, Tristan Hill from Central Florida, a guy that has had some good production. Now, it did slip a bit last year, but he had a phenomenal combine. And, I mean, he's 6'2 and a half, 310 pounds, I believe. That's off the top of my head. Um, but I think that's what he measured around. I think he tested really good as an athlete, looked very fluid in the drills. But there was a weird situation that happened with him last year. He started 13 games in 2017, but only one out of 13 a year ago. So I think there was a little feud with him and the coaching staff down there. And of course, I don't have the proper information to know that, but 
his production slipping or his game started slipping that much. I really don't know what happened with that situation. So scouts are going to have to do a little digging with that, but his film is really good and his effort is just all out. He plays like a man with his head on fire or his hair on fire every single down. And that's something that you love to see, especially out of a defensive tackle because a lot of guys you see, they come firing off the ball early in the game, but as the game weighs on and the game goes on, they don't have that same type of juice off the interior. But you're not th- – that's what you're getting with Tristan Hill. He's going to go 100, pow- 100 miles per hour every single rep. So I think he's going to go probably late day two. I think that's a fair range for him. Uh, another guy that I really like is Kalen Saunders from Western Illinois. Now, he's a bit of a shorter guy. He's only six foot, 325 pounds, so – Maybe he's more of your one technique, but I think he's probably more of a three technique just because he is very explosive. And, Jason, I know you like your undersized interior guys that are really explosive. Caitlin Caitlin Saunders is definitely that guy. And the last guy I really like on day two, or actually two more guys that I like, is Rennell Wren from Arizona State. Now, they did play him at one technique, and I thought he played out of position a lot. But he's only been a one-year starter, and I think he only had one and a half sacks last year. His production hasn't been great. But he's been playing out of position at nose tackle. I think he's more of a three technique. And he's another guy that I got to focus on down at the senior bowl. And I put a star beside his name because he was absolutely dominating in one-on-ones. And then it translated when they went 11-on-11 in the team periods because he was at that natural three technique spot. Uh, Dremont Jones from Ohio State is another guy that I like. But I'm not really as high on him as some people are. I think. A lot of people have him in the early second round. I think I have him in the mid-third round just because he is a bit wild and crazy with his approach, and he's really undisciplined, and he just thinks every play has to be a highlight play. So he needs to tone that down a bit. But I think if he's able to get with a demanding position coach that can teach him to be a bit more disciplined in his his approach, I think he could turn into a starter. All right here. Bring us home day three defensive tackles. Who do you like? Uh, Daniel Wise from Kansas. He's a guy that I like. Uh, he's a bit undersized. He has really good genes. His dad was a first round pick, I believe it was. And his brother is actually Dietrich Wise uh, from the Patriots. He plays defensive end. So he's a fourth round pick a couple years ago. So he has those genes that you're looking for, those bloodlines. And he has some work to do as far as being able to stand in there and really take on those double teams. I think that's really his weakness right now. He's only 281 pounds, so he needs to gain some weight. But I think he's, if he's able to do that, I think he could be an intriguing piece on day three. Another guy that I like um, is Terry Beckner Jr. from Missouri. Now, he has some, he's had, he has had some knee troubles in the past. I think he's had torn ACLs twice in opposite knees. So I think that's going to cause him to slip a bit. But he's a guy that I think he's more of a two-down guy. He's not going to give you much on third down. But as far as a depth piece, that could be that penetrating type of three technique. I think he could be that and somebody that you could find on day two. Uh, Jared Willis is another guy that I like from Miami. He's had a winding road, started off as Florida, uh, former five-star prospect, highly touted, took a year off in 2007 or 2016. He came back in 2017 and again last year at Miami. Uh, he's the younger brother of Landon Collins, the safety for the Redskins. So he has some bloodlines, and I'm sure a lot of people really remember him, but they don't notice that they remember him uh, at the Under Armour All-American game a couple of years ago. He, his mom was upset again, like with Landon, when he chose to go to Florida as opposed to uh, LSU. She wanted both of her babies to go to LSU, and she was really upset when that <laughs> happened. So I'm sure a lot of people remember seeing that on ESPN. That was Gerald Willis and Landon Collins. So he's a guy that could be an intriguing piece on day three. Wow, and day three, I guess, is it just uh, the the off the field and some of the other things that has him dropping? Because I've seen him. He's another player that I've seen, you know, in some people's top 50 and, you know, in other cases on day three. Like, what is it with him that has people so polarized in, in terms of his evaluation? I think his love of the game. I think that's the biggest question out there for him because he just randomly took a year off in 2017. He didn't give any explanation, and he just left the team. So, and then at Florida – he once again bowed out. He didn't really tell well, what happened at Florida. He got in a fight uh, with a quarterback. I think his, his name escapes me. Morton Wig was his last name. I think he's the son of Marty Morton Wig. Um, so he got in a fight there, and the police got involved, and they just didn't allow him back on the team. So he left, and then he went to Miami after that. He got to Miami. He was suspended his very first game there. He ended up playing a couple games, and then the following year, he just completely took a year off, went on a hiatus, 
And then he came back last year and really had a breakout season. So there's really some questions about the love and dedication to the game with him. And I think he's probably going to go a bit later than what a lot of people are expecting right now. I think I have a fourth round grade on him right now just because I don't really know why that hiatus happened. Okay. And is Gerald Willis, is that it? Or, or do we have anyone else here on day three? Uh, Terry Beckner is another one that I talked about already. Yeah. Michael Dogby from Temple, a guy that really has caused some steam lately. He tested really well at his pro day. He wasn't invited to the combine. I was really surprised by that. Uh, he think he's about 6'3", 290 pounds. I think that's where he measured at his pro day. Very explosive, very strong. And if you look up a picture of him, he definitely looks the part. He's built like a dang brick house. So he's able to hold up on those double teams. Very strong. I think he ended up benching like 32 reps at his pro day. So he's very strong. He has that weight weight room strength, and it really translates to the field. So he could be a late-round guy that could end up being a starter. I think that highly of him. Uh, so I'm really excited to see where he goes on day three. Awesome. Well, uh, we made it through day three for ourselves here too so we got uh if you haven't you know already been i hope you have been you've been following along we started this thing off with the interior offensive line moved to offensive tackle we're keeping this thing in the trenches today jr just gave you some people to look up at defensive tackle and that's it that's all we made it we'll be back tomorrow with another one and uh yeah thanks for sticking with us jr thanks for coming on y'all have a good one